The Holy Father brings back a tradition honoring the baptism of Christ. Io te battesso nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. At a Mass yesterday in the Sistine Chapel, the Holy Father baptized 16 babies. Pope St. John Paul II began the tradition back in 1981. Last year it was canceled because of the coronavirus pandemic. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tellenhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, great to see you. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this baptism mass? Sure, Tracy, and thank you for having me. Well, as you know, yesterday we celebrated the feast marking Jesus' baptism. Here in the Vatican, it is an old and dear tradition that the Pope baptizes children in the Sistine Chapel. And last year, unfortunately, this had to be canceled due to COVID-19. Despite rising numbers right now in Italy, this year it was still possible for Pope Francis to baptize 16 newborns, 7 boys and 9 girls. It was a beautiful celebration amidst the gorgeous paintings of the Sistine Chapel. And in his brief homily, Pope Francis reminded us that the infants received their Christian identity through the sacrament of baptism. He also highlighted the role of parents and godparents. They're all called to support the baptized in deepening and preserving their Christian identity. And I also understand this morning that Pope Francis met with the members of the diplomatic corps to the Holy See. Uh, what more can you tell us about that? Sure. This is another famous tradition, the Holy Father's address to the ambassadors to the Holy See. Today, Pope Francis received the diplomatic corps, and in his address, he made three important points. First, he spoke about the current corona crisis and called for the availability of vaccines across the world, especially in the developing countries. Secondly, the Holy Father also addressed the topic of migration, recalling his recent visit to the island of Lesbos. In general, he asked all countries to be more welcoming to people looking for a new life. Speaking about the refugees he met, he reminded us that we cannot be indifferent or hide behind walls and barbed wires under the pretext of defending security or a certain style of life. Thirdly, Pope Francis encouraged new international efforts to ensure global peace. A particular goal is to rid the world of nuclear arms. He said that in the 21st century, nuclear arms are an inadequate and inappropriate means of responding to security threats and that possession of them is ultimately immoral. And also talking about the diplomatic corps at the Vatican, Andreas, uh, can you share with us some numbers and details? Of course, Tracy. Um, right now, there are 183 states that currently maintain diplomatic relations with the Holy See. In addition, there are the European Union and the Order of Malta. And we have 89 ambassadors to the Holy See right now residing in Rome. One of the more recently established embassies, for example, is the one of Palestine, which opened its doors on June 26th in 2015. It will soon be joined by the Swiss and the Azerbaijanian embassy to the Holy See. At the same time, there are 13 na nations with which the Holy See does not have full diplomatic relations. And standing out in this list is, for example, Afghanistan. There hasn't been even a functioning church since the return of the Taliban. But Tracy, to end on a more positive note, in his meeting with the diplomats, the Pope today stressed the importance of dialogue and diplomacy by quoting the prophet Jeremiah. He tells us that God has plans for welfare and not for evil. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for speaking with us about all of this. We appreciate it. Andreas Townhauser, EWTN, Vatican Bureau Chief. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.